Why ignore the all-female reboot? Um, because it was a piece of shit. Nobody liked it. It was terrible. It took shots at men. It was not funny. It, it, it mistook wonton and queef, uh, reoccurring gags and, and jokes for actual humor. It took shots at the fans. It was probably one of the biggest starts of this whole trend that the modern studios have nowadays of taking shots at the fans. Um, oh yeah, it was also just a plain bad shitty movie. That's why we ignore the all-female Ghostbusters reboot. Hello, everyone. I am MechaRana42, your favorite YouTube harpy. And yes, we are talking Ghostbusters. I love talking about Ghostbusters. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. <sighs> this article, though. This article. <laughs> just don't look at me, Kate McKinnon. Please, just don't look at me. The new... Jason Reitman Project will bypass the 2016 film, a movie that is sparking debate. Oh, the 2016 film? No, there's no debate. It was shit. It, it, no, don't, don't watch it. Don't just, let's pretend it doesn't exist. Let's just pretend it never happened. That's the best thing we can do. Less than three years after Sony's Ghostbusters reboot battled on, online trolls. Oh, fuck you, Hollywood Reporter. Online trolls? Really? Really? Hollywood Reporter, we're still, we're, we're playing that. We're, we got that record up. You know, it's an oldie, it's, but it's not a goodie. It's one of those that um, I always change the station anytime I hear, and I tune you out and don't stop listening to what you have to say because you've already proven to me that you have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> you cannot keep calling the fans trolls and... What the fuck is wrong with you? Tuesday's news that the property is coming back quickly sparked conversation among fans about nostalgia, toxic fandom... And legacy. Toxic fandom is that is basically code for the media attacking the fans. The, the toxic studios, the toxic media attacking the fans. Jason Reitman, son of original Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman, will helm a continuation of the series that ignores Paul Feig's female led reboot. Good. Start, which starred Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig, Leslie Jones, and Kate McKinnon. The new film, Sources Stay, will focus on four teens, two boys and two girls, and continue the story of 1984's Ghostbusters and the 1989 sequel. Yes! Yes! This is what we want. This is all we wanted. This is all we wanted. We wanted a continuation with people who cared about the property. That's all we wanted. Ignoring the 2016 film is a missed opportunity. Excuse me. Hannah Woodhead argues. <laughs> Woodhead. <sighs> argues in a piece she wrote for the London-based film magazine, Little White Lies, an open letter to Jason Reitman. She writes that while 2016's Ghostbusters wasn't an original idea, the all-female team pushed franchise the franchise forward in an important way that may be lost in the new version. Good! Good! That's perfect! That is wonderful! Good! We don't want it to go in that direction. We don't want it to go in the, the direction where they call people toxic man babies, uh, basement dwellers, neck beards, whatever the hell else. I mean, just the horrible names. They, they lifted them right from the, the comments that they probably planted them themselves in the, in the YouTube video, in their, in their trailer. You know, the one where like, ain't, ain't, no, ain't no chicks gonna bust no ghosts and... Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Good. We want to get rid of that. We don't want this in our movie. I think we'll suffer from this collective sense of nostalgia in the film where we're always looking to the past rather than the future. She tells Hollywood Reporter, the past is safe. The past is easy. Well, that's not really for us. You know, we don't want continuous remakes and reboots. That's Hollywood telling you that we want this nostalgia. You know what we want? We want the good action figures. You know, we want the giant, well-done figures that we can stick on our wall, open, play with, pose, display, whatever we need to do. Because we couldn't as a kid. That's what we want. We want the reproductions of the original toys. We want good new figures. I'm a grown woman. I'm collecting the, the original My Little Ponies from 1983 because I didn't have them all as a kid. And there were always ponies I wanted. And now I can just get them all because I'm an adult with a job. So th this, is, this is something that you guys aren't listening to when we say we want these nostalgic things. That does not mean bring back a, a nostalgic franchise and shit all over it. Don't do that. Bad Hollywood. And don't call us names either. We're not going to give you money if you keep calling us names. 
1984's Ghostbusters is widely considered a classic, and while the 1989 follow-up was less well-received, it does have its fans. Oh, me. I actually really love the second one. I was 10 years old when it came out. I think a lot of people don't like it because maybe people like Nostalgic Critic or, or some of the, the big profile YouTube channels might might have painted it in kind of a bad light. Like, it was less... Well, it, w it was definitely not as good as the original, but I really liked it. I don't think it was that bad. It was fun. I was It was definitely more of a kid's movie, but I was 10 years old, like I said. I was a kid when it came out. It's fine. I, I'm okay with it. 1984 is... Oh, ah, here we go. Where's we're down here? Decades later, Feeg's all-female 2016 Ghostbusters received a 74% on... Or fresh 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. Higher than Ghostbusters 2. You see... Rotten Tomatoes wasn't a thing when Ghostbusters 2 came out. It was 1989. We didn't really have the internet like it is today. Ghostbusters 2 got that low score, like I said, probably because of things like Nostalgia Critic and all these, these other high-profile nostalgic YouTube channels that say it's not very good. People were also scoring movies a little differently when they started scoring a lot of the retro movies because these new movies are basically scored on how diverse they are and how woke they are and, and all these things. And most of the time, they don't even give them a good review. They just say, oh, yes, I love it because it's so diverse, 100% fresh. In addition to the misogynistic trolling online, oh, fuck you, Hollywood Reporter, Joan faced racist attacks that caused her to leave Twitter for a period of time. You know, I, I, we know, okay, 2016, hate posts. Where are the hate posts? Leslie Jones, where are these hate posts? Please DM me when you have a moment. John Boyega, where, where are these hate posts? I'm not seeing them. I'm seeing a bunch of positive posts. So here's the thing. If these, if these, if these things happened, we don't know if they happened or not. <sighs> we know that, that Hollywood blows a lot of these out of proportion. We know that the Kelly Marie Tran thing was faked, was blown out of proportion. It was started from a rumor. It didn't actually happen. Um, Kelly Marie Tran, the actress who plays Rose Tico in Star Wars The Last Jedi, was, um, her, her, her bullyman, or her... Her leaving of Instagram was faked and reported as being bullied off of Instagram when it was, she was not, she didn't delete her account. She suspended it for a brief period of time. At the same time, she started filming Last Jedi. She also suspended an account that she never really used. So yes, there, there, are, we know that a lot of the times these reports are completely fabricated. <sighs> I have no idea about the Leslie Jones one. I wasn't covering that at the time. I'm just saying, I don't know. It probably, if I had, if I had to... Here, let me rephrase that. I'm, I'm going to leave this in. I'm going to leave my, my correction, my course correction in here. <sighs> was Leslie Jones famous before Ghostbusters 2016? I believe she was. I believe she was on Saturday Night Live. I believe she was an actress in the public eye, famous already. Would you understand that people are kind of dicks on social media? So let, let's assume, let's assume that this did happen. And I'm just going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she probably, see, just say she was. Let's just say she was. I'm not going to argue that today. That'll be another video. Why wouldn't you know how to use mute or block or, or you can filter out keywords. You can filter out certain things. You can get people banned off of Twitter if you have the time of day. You can hire you you can set somebody like an, an assistant or somebody to handle your twitter account you can have like a fake one if you really don't want to interact as as yourself you know i'm sure plenty of celebrities do is she is she new to being a celebrity i don't know i was under the impression she was on saturday night live i don't know it, it's just one of those things that like when you are that instantly accessible on social media being somebody in the public eye you might need to learn how to handle people online. You might need to learn how to mute, block, whatever. Just say, oh my God, whatever, who cares? There's, there's stupid people out there. Mute them, block them. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Trust me. I get a lot more hate than a lot of people because I'm kind of a harpy in case you hadn't noticed. Oh Lord, leave Twitter for a period of time. I think it's a really entertaining movie that was doomed simply because it wasn't the film a, ver a certain very loud percentage of the audience wanted, says Drew McWeeny. <laughs> His name's McWeeny? Oh, that's awesome. 
co-creator of 80s All Over podcast and a longtime film critic. McWeeny. <laughs> Pay attention, Beavis. <laughs> I can't get past his name. I just can't. <laughs> McWeeny understands criticism of Raymond taking the reins for the new installment, but believes he is well-suited for the director's chair. While I get why some people might be annoyed, I met Jason Reitman for the first time in 1990 when he was still just Ivan's kid, and at that point he was a movie crazy, he was movie crazy, and also knew his dad's work intimately, says McWeeny. Oh. <laughs> McWeeny. It makes sense that he'd want to do it, and I suspect he'll do a good job with it. They're trolling us, aren't they? These aren't real people, are they? If, if he is, he's an awesome name. Craft contributor Chris Sutcliffe was a fan of Feig's film and grew up with Ghostbusters. He's more concerned about the direction of the new film under Reitman. I wouldn't be, though. I mean, that's that's a person I'm not concerned with. If you said Paul Feig was getting another sequel, I'd be like, no, a million times no. What frustrates me about this new film, and I'm very aware that we've had very little news, is how keen they are to distance themselves from the 2016 film. Good! That's good news! That's perfect news! We want to distance ourselves from that film. Seriously. Not only will it feel like a victory to all the wrong people, but it just feels like a creative step backwards. Why? Good! After the announcement, Sutcliffe took to Twitter to pose that this new Ghostbusters is missing an opportunity to converge the universe a la Sony's Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, which combined multiple Spider-People into one story. Please don't. No, we don't need it. We just need to kind of reboot that reboot of Ghostbusters. We need to pretend it didn't happen. It was an alternate reality, an alternate timeline as different people. Spider-Verse tells a new story with a diverse cast. While still acknowledging the past, Sutcliffe says, you could easily take the ball from Feig's story to explore generation gaps or fatherhood or the cyclical nature of disasters. Yeah, you, you could also just make a good movie <laughs> and not explore any of that and completely ignore the Ghostbusters 2016 movie. You could, you could have had four of the funniest actresses right now working with the retired originals. There are a hundred stories you could tell that wouldn't send the message to the little girls that like the 2016 version, that they've had their turn. Oh, no, no, no. You've had your turn. And there, I'm going to put it like you guys put it to us. How, how do you put it? Oh, th this isn't for you. This is for our generation. You have yours. Oh, it's so precious. It works two ways. You have your Ghostbusters 2016. It's still there. You still have your DVDs. You still have it available to watch digitally and stream. Go watch that. Let us have our Ghostbusters. Cyclops does acknowledge the possibilities of the new film, which as of yet does not have the original stars. Um, actually, I did hear, and correct me if I'm wrong, I need to. I probably need to make a video on that as well. I believe that the four stars are now coming back at the time of me recording this video. At least there, there's a, an article from Ernie Hudson saying he would want to come, or that they are coming back, I believe. So that, that might, this might actually be incorrect, so... <laughs> There is every chance that we're still going to get a great film, says Sutcliffe. Yeah, probably. Maybe it will further open up the franchise. Maybe they've been lying, and I'll get a big crossover event all along. Oh, I hope not. McWeenie, <laughs> McWeenie is hopeful the new film is not actually writing off the 2016 reboot. Well, it should. It's terrible. Just write it off. Get rid of it. Just just take it. Throw it away. Just just kind of, what, what we need to do is just kind of push it off. Just, just push, push it away, push it off the end of, edge of a cliff, right? You, you want to just go up to the edge of the cliff and just kind of, oops, and, and let it kind of just fall face first and go, ah, I don't know what's happening. Splat right on a uh, bunch of jagged rocks. And, and you want it to kind of have, you'd be kind of twitching there at the end of the bottom, at the bottom of this canyon at the bottom of the the cliff all these rocks like poking up through it just pieces of rock and bone and chunks of skull and and brain matter and all this stuff on the rocks and, and then it finally stops twitching that's what i want that's what i want from ghostbusters 2016 that might be a little graphic wow <laughs> he wonders if there's a possibility that something larger is going on that could involve the leading ladies of Fig's film. Oh, God, I hope not. No more of them. No, 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 no. Not those horrible sexist pieces of crap objectifying poor special Kevin. The first thing I heard... Yeah, I've seen that movie twice. Three times, maybe. I've seen it a few times. I think three times. It's not good. <laughs> no version of it is good. It is painful to sit through. 
The first thing I heard when they set up shop to get this go around of ghost busting off the ground before a feed came on board even was that they had a master plan. Please don't. No, we don't need a master plan. We just need a master plan to, like I said, push it off that cliff. He cites the comic book runs of Ghostbusters at IDW Publishing and how those lean heavily on the idea that all of the Ghostbusters iterations are pocket universes, something that came up with before um, came, they came up with before the Spider Verse hit theaters. As Wood had point, oh, so which one is the one with the gorilla, Spencer Tracy and Kong? Where where is that one? Where's that version? You know, the real Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters. I know the the the, the yeah, I get it, I get it, I know, I know. Film Ghostbusters and the real Ghostbusters were better. I, I will give you that. Before Tucker and Larry Storch's Ghostbusters was first. I've seen it. It's not very good, but it's fun. And the Filmation Ghostbusters is not fun to sit through as an adult. So <laughs> I will admit that. I'm just trolling a little bit with that. As Woodhouse points out, an animated Ghostbusters movie Sony is developing separately could be that franchise's answer to Spider-Verse. Oh, they probably are. The trolling, uh, the trolling, the Ghostbusters reboot film encountered something seen before, such as when actor John Boyega was the target of racist comments following, oh, here, of course, they're bringing up Kelly Marie Tran. So this is all fake. So we know this is all fake because we know 1000% that Kelly Marie Trans is faked. They even, they even tried to blame Russian bots for a little bit on her thing. But no, we did trace back to who the actual originator of the Kelly Marie Tran faking of her bullying off social media was <sighs> so no we know that's fake i'm not even gonna, i'm not even going to justify that with an answer will you stop pushing this narrative this is not true this isn't even real this didn't happen woodhead thinks that the new star wars film proves well or will prove that mo movies like ghostbusters can succeed as long as they manage to blend nostalgia and newness in a smart way and without acknowledging the 2016 movie you're ignoring some of that nostalgia why are they so why are they so pissed at us about ghostbusters why can't they just leave this shit alone why can't they just say hey here's a new ghostbusters movie have fun with it but then no they gotta write these fucking articles where they go after the fans and they're like oh the poor the poor ghostbusters 2016 movie it was failed because of those horrible horrible fans oh, seriously the reason the new Star Wars films has worked is because they retain the spirit of the original films well they didn't work they're failing they're failing miserably as well so what do you guys think of this article are we uh, I'm fighting them on Ghostbusters I'm in the fight this time I'm in this round I should have I really should have started my channel when Ghostbusters 2016 came out as far as this content I really regret that I didn't, but I'm here now and I'm fighting. I'm fighting you guys. I'm fighting you, Hollywood Reporter. I'm fighting you, Screen Rant, Forbes, all of you. Any Anytime you guys call it the fans, I'm going to fight you. Because we're not that toxic. We're not that bad. You know, there's, yeah, there's going to be one or two assholes in the world. That's how the world works. But no, we, we should we should get this win. <laughs> also, thank you for being a brand new subscriber. <gasps> I always forget to turn off the notifications, but thank you so much, Josh, <laughs> for being a subscriber. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. I am Mecha Random 42 We are definitely talking Ghostbusters and, and Ghostbusters 3, Ghostbusters 2016. Oh boy, am I ready to talk about this stuff on the channel. <laughs> Wait, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below, and I will see you guys on the next video or live stream. Bye! Thanks for watching! If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe! See you in the next video! Bye!